Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this year's 2021 year-end presentation on Business One and the outlook to the year 2022. My name is Rainer Zino and start in charge of product management for our mid-market solutions, Business One, Business by Design, and a proud member of the bigger S4 family within SAP. Obviously, predicting the year 2022 in the current times of uncertainty always is a challenge, but what I will present to you in the next roughly 15 minutes is the current plan that we have. Obviously, as this legal disclaimer page says, plans can change, and uh, this happens to us pretty frequently these days, but that is the best guess that we have at the moment what we want to provide to you in the year 2022. If I look back into 2021, and we are in the fourth quarter still, therefore, no statements about the fourth quarter results. But if I look at the first three quarters of 2021, we saw an amazing bounce back of business one. So uh, we completely recovered from the downturn in 2020. And I'm super proud of all of our partners and all of the colleagues and customers who helped uh, to keep Business One at this amazing level. Um, more than 70,000 customers, the, f the net new names engine of SAP, uh, and that for many, many years, this is a hell of an accomplishment. I'm, I'm super proud of all of the entire organizations, of the customers, of the partners, and the colleagues in SAP in all of the different divisions. Just, and I saw this slide um, multiple times this year, and therefore I thought I want to share it to just give you a glimpse of the breadth of Business One. It is just an amazing solution, ranging from all of the aspects of ERP and really delivering an end to end suite in a proven format that we now have for so many years. The second key statement of Business One is its global availability. 50 countries provided by SAP, many, many more by our partners. Therefore, Business One is used today in more than 170 countries in many, many languages. So the global reach of that solution is really one of the key capabilities that we have. The roadmap slide hasn't changed for the last couple of years. Um, as I said in my 2018 roadmap presentation, 2019, 2020, 2021, we do all and everything that we can do to keep Business One super attractive and make it the stable platform for you for the years to come with a different, with a different deployment options um, and everything we are investing in this solution. So how do we shape this solution? Number one, there are topics which we don't need to debate. We simply do them, especially everything around legal compliance. The second aspect is the Business One web client, and I will talk about that in a minute. But the third aspect are all of the influence requests that you are delivering to us. And you can see here how many influence requests we were able to deliver in the different areas. So a big thank you to all of you for raising this influence request so that we can build the roadmap really in a way that it meets your requirements and that you have an ongoing benefit from all of the work that we are doing. So please keep the influence requests coming. Sometimes an, inf sometimes an influence request takes a bit longer uh, then, then we hope to do it, or maybe that you need it. But none of the influence requests are forgotten. We are looking at all of them. If I look at the roadmap for business one, then here you see the mainstream buckets where we are investing. Number one, the business one web client. To give B1 a state-of-the-art browser-based user interface based on the SAP uh, Fury look and feel using the SAP technologies is the most important investment. Uh, I'm lucky that we got uh, quite a substantial increase in the resources 
once you have it, um, then obviously the challenges start uh, to build up this team. Uh, here, a big thank you to my colleagues in China uh, who hired all of the new colleagues who we want to work with uh, to build out the B1 web client. So a big thank you. I know how difficult it is to hire colleagues uh, in these difficult times and to onboard them, uh, to get them productive. So a big thank you to all of my colleagues there. The B1 web client is a project which obviously cannot deliver uh, in one year. So uh, the project already started in 2020. Um, we delivered a lot in 2021. And I hope that around about middle of uh, 2023, we should be done with a B1 web client project. And then you have the end-to-end -end experience of what you can do with Business One also via the browser-based user interface. The second major investment bucket, obviously, is everything around localization. It's an ongoing race. Um, a lot of governments have changed uh, regulatory, um, situa or regulatory settings uh, during the COVID times. That all needs to be reflected. And uh, a big thank you to all the colleagues from the globalization team within Business One for all of the work that they do to keep the solution compliant. Extension and integration always were key capabilities in Business One. The focus is also here to improve the integration into Microsoft Teams and the other Microsoft solutions to also use SAP's digital payment services. So growing these extension capabilities is key. Also in the context of the B1 web client, because if we now provide this beautiful user interface on top of the Business One kernel, it is equally important that you, my dear partners, also adopt the B1 web client technology and put it on top of your applications that make B1 complete. So that is something uh, where we will have many more sessions for you in the year 2022 so that you can see how to build user interfaces using the web client technology, uh, how to extend the service layer of Business One and what the next steps are there for you. Last but not least, uh, we're working on uh, the cloud operations, so to provide you with tools uh, to run a smooth operation for your customers, and uh, we are improving the mobile applications. So that, at a high level, uh, is the roadmap. If you would like to see more details, there are great presentations available by Ari Shapira, by, by Peter Dominic, on the details of the B1 roadmap, so please have a look. As I said, the major investment is the B1 web client. We delivered a lot of capabilities with the August release, and now we will ship uh, the 2111 release, um, most likely in the last days of December. Um, we obviously had to react uh, to the log4j vulnerability. Uh, we fixed that one, um, therefore we delayed the availability by uh, a couple of weeks to make sure that uh, you have uh, the most robust version in your hands. Let me use this opportunity to call out once again, it is super important that you stay close to our feature pack releases. Don't fall behind, make sure that your customers are as close as possible on the latest releases. Because for example, a log4j vulnerability, I can fix that in B110. I cannot fix it in B19.3. Even if I would know now exactly what I have to do, but so many additional security fixes have been built over the last couple of months um, that it would not make any economic sense to re-implement them. So therefore, call to action, Please keep your customers as close as possible to the release highlights and to, to the released capabilities so that we can provide you the most stable environment uh, that, that we can provide. That said, let me give you a short demo of the B1 web client and um, 
Let me log on here to my Business One system. And here you can see the beautiful user interface of the B1 web client. As I said, it follows the SAP Fiori style guide. Therefore, if you see demos of S4, if you see demos of by design, if you see demos of Business One, they always use the same look and feel. And in here, you now have all of the different capabilities, be it in the payments area, in the accounting area, in the services area. And you can see the areas where we already have capabilities, specifically in the CRM space and in the sales space. Sales space. If I drill into, for example, here the sales orders, you will recognize always the same patterns that we are using. So you have the filter bar at the top, or you directly can choose a specific order and then see all of the relevant information. As mentioned, there are many more detailed presentations out there available by Peter Dominic and Ari Shapira, where they explain to you what the B1 web client can do, especially all of the beautiful analytical capabilities. Uh, but I wanted to give you a short glimpse also in this video how the B1 web client looks like and that we have the most modern UI technology available in Business One that we have available to us. If we go back to the slides, that much about the B1 web client. The other topic which is very important for us to keep B1 as attractive as possible is to use the machine learning capabilities that we get from SAP's business technology platform also in the B1 context. The journey started already with the capability uh, to manage supplier invoices. So you take a picture of the supplier invoice, uh, we analyze the picture and we create the supplier invoice in business one. So that, side, that saves a lot of precious time. I'm amazed by the quick uptake of uh, that capability in our installed base and we are monitoring the accuracy at which uh, we recognize the invoices and that is really developing fast and I'm very happy with that progress. But that was just the first step. Um, as Simona Marinche and her team illustrated here, um, the whole IRP, uh, the whole scenario around the intelligent enterprise has multiple facets. So we are using the artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to recognize documents. The next step is to automate as much as possible. So especially when you have processes where you have multiple systems involved and where you switch from one solution to the next, this is where the robotics process automation framework really can make your life easier. So that is the next step that we are doing. And after that, uh, we are looking into the capabilities that we have from the underlying HANA database, specifically in the area of predictive analytics. And then we also have a couple of ideas on how we would use natural language processing in the different shapes that are available to us today. That will take a bit longer time, but it is super important for me that we make sure that all of the capabilities that we develop in SAP, in the area of intelligent enterprise, also find their way into Business One and are available to you. So that here is the example which you may already know from the supplier invoice recognition where you take the picture. We then use the electronic document service uh, to analyze and to populate the information into the corresponding B1 tables. One last topic I would like to present to you as a sneak preview for the year 2022. Many of our large SAP customers change their purchasing terms and conditions at the moment in a way that they demand from their suppliers that you disclose the carbon footprints of the product that you are selling. Therefore, SAP decided to build next to the big product footprint management solution uh, that we will have in the S4 area, we built a lightweight 
Carbon Footprint Management Solution on SAP's business technology platform. So it is the typical example of a side-by-side -side extension, what many of you are doing today already or since quite a while. And we call this solution Business Ecology Management. And the way how it works, it extracts the relevant master data and production data from your Business One system. You record the emission data, like uh, the gas readings or the energy bill. We then calculate the emission. You can analyze the footprint and, for example, optimize it by saying, I'm using a different carrier, I'm purchasing raw material with a lower carbon footprint, and then you can disclose all of that information. How does that look uh, in detail? And you will see more of that at the Innovation Summits, uh, hopefully in May 2022. So you have an, an input of carbon dioxide, of your footprint of 4.2 tons, and it is split into raw materials, into the gas that you consume, and into the electric power that you are consuming. We provide you with a modeling environment so that you can describe your manufacturing environment. And then you see on the right side the output, still the 4.2 tons, but this time broken down into the finished goods that you are selling, in our example of a bakery, the chocolate cake and the strawberry cake. Uh, we will work very closely with the B1 partners here and put that solution in their hands also because Business One partners have built lots of extensions in that area. But we believe that we should have a solution available to you, our Business One customers and partners, with which you can go back to your customers and say, this is the environment at which you can record your carbon footprint, optimize your carbon footprint, disclose your carbon footprint. This is a really important step. Um, regarding availability, we are working with the first partners in the first half of 2022. Uh, general availability, um, we should accomplish round about uh, year end 2022. Let's see how the whole thing works, but you will hear a lot more about this solution, business ecology management, in the year 2022. As said, it is built on SAP's business technology, so it's a side-by-side -side extension to SAP Business One. It will also provide you a state-of-the-art user interface, as you've already seen it with a B1 web client. Again, we are staying within the Fiori, uh, in the Fiori paradigm. We're extending it here, for example, what you see at the bottom of the page with the so-called Zenki diagram, so that you can see exactly where does the carbon input come from and how does it translate into the outcome. That much from my side. Let me wish you a super successful and first and foremost healthy 2022. I really hope that we can meet in this year in May at the Innovation Summits again. If not, by now we are used to these virtual channels. With that, all the best for 2022 and see you soon. Bye.